welcome to the Flawed Workshop Podcast with me, your co-host, Alex Roberts. And me, your host, Nancy Art Music. Welcome to the Metasode. m m m metasode <laughs> I, we've, I mean, I think it's fair to say we just rehearsed it because... Just one time count as a rehearsal. Uh, I guess not. And that was really on the fly. So if anything, this was the rehearsal of on the fly. Ooh, oh, this is, is the this is so meta. Yeah. So, <laughs> welcome to the meta sode. This is episode ten of the Flawed Workshop podcast. And Nancy, why don't you tell us what this episode is going to be about? It's so lonely without a guest. <laughs> all of a sudden, <laughs> you're, you're getting flashbacks to episode one and two. Yeah. Oh my god. Well, we're obviously going to talk more about this, but mm. this this episode is all about what it's like to be running this podcast so far. Uh, episode 10, that means, I want to say 10 weeks, but really on the first week we released two episodes, uh, so it doesn't really count, I guess. But we've had 10, over 10 interviews, because we recorded quite a few of them in a very short space of time, mm-hmm. so it's just the amount of exciting things coming up is amazing. We've got some some genuinely big names coming up as well which is really fantastic uh in such a short space of time the feedback that we've had from the podcast from people listening the enthusiasm that people have been having listening to the episodes and wanting to be involved in it um it's really awesome to know that creating this and trying to reach the goal of making the little community um and making people feel less alone with their creative endeavors is really hitting a nerve with people but in the best way possible it's 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 striking home and uh thank you simply absolutely if you're listening to this uh and if you're also able to leave us a message or any kind of feedback on our respective social medias which are linked in the show notes please do and let us know um but we appreciate hearing from most of you guys in person because most of the people listening to this we know personally and speak to on a regular basis but um there's enough people that surprise me every week when I upload an episode uh, sort of, you know, before work or at midnight if I'm running on a slightly tighter editing schedule. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm always just surprised by the amount of people that have listened to the episode as it's coming out. And it's just heartwarming and always surprising and just has been so great. (laughs) It's been great. But I think one of the the best parts about running this podcast, um, and I say running very loosely, I, I sort of co-host it and help arrange a few interviews and things. Um, Nancy, and you do the, the writing text and making sure all my ridiculous spelling er- errors <laughs> don't make it in. <laughs> I love that you miss said errors then as well, just to sort of highlight the point. Classic anyway, me. But what I wanted to say is that the, the, th- the thing you are listening to right now is pretty much the entire work of Nancy. She records it, she edits it, she posts it. Uh, she optimizes it all and hours into the night I will frequently go to bed and she'll still be up editing and things so uh, although there's not an audience or a live studio audience or anything thank you Nancy Aww, thanks. Yeah. Um, so what I wanted to also say was creating this podcast was uh, to me at least was going to be a bit of a tangent for a creative outlet it was still going to be a creative endeavor but mm. it was still going to but it was going to be done in such a different way that I didn't quite know what to expect from it And I've been pleasantly surprised at how enthusiastic it has helped make me about my own creative endeavours. Oh, ditto. And uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, if we looked at your visual art for the first example, Mm. um, those of you who uh, don't know or may not remember, Nancy has a weekly comic um, that she posts to Instagram and other platforms called Umeboshi, which is the cutest little Japanese-esque food item you've ever seen in your life oh um umeboshi means pickled plum by the way <laughs> but what i wanted to ask you was how has being hosting this podcast influenced and perhaps even altered the way that you have processed your arts and gone about doing your art uh it has been it because i'm dedicated to making this podcast consistent um and if there ever needs to be a diversion for when we take a break or whatever, that that's planned and not by accident. Um, I've applied the same dedication to uh, Umeboshi because I don't think I started posting weekly until 
this podcast started. So they kind of go hand mm. in hand as the two sort of side projects that I have going, uh, which I didn't expect. Like mm. they, they, at some point, I applied the dedication that I have to the podcast to publishing Umeboshi, um, and I didn't didn't really expect that. Well, has it? Uh, you you mentioned it. You got a bit more. You yeah, mentioned that the podcast um, made you a little bit more um, creative or, or influenced you in some ways. How was it for it's, you? It, it's, it definitely made me feel more enthusiastic about the creative outlet. And I mentioned before in, in previous episodes um, that when I started trying to create my online presence and things, I posted every single day for 150 days straight. And that sort of scared me, burnt me out and stuff. And mm. Uh, I'm looking back on that and realizing that I had the right idea, mm. but I executed it poorly. Mm. And the regularity and the and the weekly scheduling and sort of self-imposed deadlines that we have with this podcast have really helped and reaffirmed to me uh, different ways of going about my uh, my writing in particular. Mm. Um, and since we've started recording things again and. Uh, you're far better at recording than I am. You, you know, have a degree in it. And I've just sort of have dabbled. Woo-hoo. I've dabbled in the sidelines when you've not been around. Well, we've talked about how questionable my education was. <laughs> well, on pa- sure. on, okay, on paper, on you, paper, I should on, be on able paper, to do a phenomenal. lot of beautiful things with this the, audio. The point I'm trying to make is that uh, I've also started going back into actually recording my music rather than just playing it for myself. Mm. And um, it's been a fun. We've only done it properly sort of one time so far in the last couple of weeks um, because we are busy and so tired busy. and uh, so many in other things. In our late we're, we're 20s. Like, <laughs> so tired in our late 20s where everything hurts and time <laughs> just escapes us. But I dread our 50s. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, God, what episode would it be then? Wow. Yeah. Can you imagine? Okay, yeah. well. Um, but what I wanted to say was that um, that has been a fun spark for me mm-hmm. and the the music is very much my creation um all of the parts that we've recorded so far have been me and mine and um that is really reaffirming to me and i, I really appreciate that but what i also love is the slight collaboration that we then have when you are recording it and you'll say try this and you'll say this wasn't good enough that bit wasn't good enough not not in like a critical way, but it's yeah. But of course, I'm so in the zone of it, and you're. Able I'm looking to... at it from a very like critical, mm. like this didn't match up exactly. I mean, obviously, yeah. So from episode mm. one, where I talked about my history with my own music, and then episode eight with Blake, um, mm. and also another episode which is yet to come out with uh, our good friend Gareth, who was in the same course uh, with me at university. I kind of discovered that a lot of the insecurities that I had about making music were not completely crazy, unfounded in my own head. Definitely and not. They yeah. were not exceptions to the rule, which is what, which kind of brings it all the way full circle to how amazing and hopefully like healing well, i'm not trying to make myself sound or like make this podcast sound like oh this is medicine for the soul uh, so if you go to our website we're now selling crystals <laughs> <laughs> but um it's i just it dawned on me that i wasn't the exception in that it made i'm not lazy and i'm not you know uh like it made me feel completely much more normal than I did before and Mm -hmm. it made me acknowledge that I like a lot of people struggle with these but the difference is that I let them stop me and that it didn't let me like that you have to push through that and address why you're feeling the way that you are about all the things that you're doing but obviously I do have this critical Mm -hmm. eye which is very useful and maybe I can learn to hone it for others like when we're recording your music it's it's, it's training it's, it's like training a, a wild beast mm-hmm. your your ability to pinpoint well, particularly with music where things can be improved is phenomenal you have a really good ear for it and stuff thanks the downside for, uh, this is just me 
you know, coming from years of living with you and working with you and things, <laughs> um, is that when you turn it on yourself, it sort of gets ramped up to this maximum level of nothing is good enough. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's like I can't believe mm. that I would even make something so bad when mm. I know I could do better. Um, but we, we've established that this mm. is just perfectionism. I think I've done a good job at working towards getting rid of it. Um, oh, definitely. Yeah. Most, like... Art is the first place where I saw that happen. And then second is the podcast. With art, it was that I can... I wasn't bothered by the fact that I could visually see in my imagination what something should look like versus how it came out on the page. Um, in episode three, we talked with uh, our good friend Georgie slash Chibi Ace or Georgie May Online um, about your training your eye versus training your hand i was just going to explain say this point as well and yeah. it's it just all of these conversations have made me like have all these epiphanies about how like all of this stuff gets in the way with so many people and like th they don't move past it mm. and i was one of them except i was so painfully creative that i had to do something and if i couldn't do anything with my own creative energy, then I was going to make this podcast and I was going to at least help other people address their own inner demons in some ways. Or, But I, it, it completely blindsided me how helpful it would be for me to speak to other people specifically about this. Because of course, obviously a new podcast can't really... I mean, you can of course get guests uh, that are complete strangers online. Mm -hmm. I've been on a lot of podcasts uh, Something in the Wilderness is a really great podcast about the music of Andrew McMahon. I was on that. That was great. Um, Big Yellow Paraxis. That was about uh, just a lot of different kinds of music and like kind of analyzing things like that. The Sage of Three Paths podcast where they just like three brothers talk about life and everything. And it's just all these interactions were from strangers on the Internet. But we all had such deep and meaningful conversations and I had the same kinds of conversations with my friends because we, uh, so, you know, Georgie, Regan, oh, Jacob, Blake, uh, they're all friends of mine that um, we've been able to kind of coerce into <laughs> be getting on the podcast. Of course, they all agreed and were enthusiastic about being on it. But we, I don't ever remember ever sitting down to have such a uh, purposeful conversation about the creative stuff in our lives. In those conversations, I just, it was amazing to rediscover where we're all coming from and why we're creative and how we want to do the things we want to do. And it was just, it's been so helpful for me. Mm. It, it's been very therapeutic. Mm -hmm. um, it has really helped me just talking to so many people, uh, particularly in different fields of creativity that i would have nothing to do with like mm -hmm. uh, in particular with obi um uh, nail yeah. tech and beautician and um the approach that she had to uh, her work ethic um mm -hmm. and how she was going to reach the goals really struck a chord with me so finding something that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with what i'm trying to do in my field or my sectors anything like that how you mm -hmm. want to describe it but the the lessons are still there, and it's uh, it's like when um, I suppose this is the writer in me coming out is when you read a book or actively go and read a book that you know you probably won't enjoy because it's not something you tend to read. Mm -hmm. But there's still so much you can pick up from it. And I had it where um, uh, a book kept getting recommended to me. It was on like the bestsellers lists and all that sort of stuff, and it wasn't my kind of thing. So I, I picked it up and read it anyway. Didn't enjoy it. But I was able to find out why I didn't enjoy it. Mm. And there's still that learning lesson from it. And we, we talked about this yeah. uh, with Stephen. And it was just, mm. it was kind of reassuring. I, when you told me about that, I, I thought that it was a bit crazy for you to waste time on a book that you didn't like. But when Stephen uh, from... Episode uh, six, seven. When Stephen from episode seven, uh, also a writer, um, mentioned that he did the same thing just so that you learn what not to do um that was a big revelation for me as well and it just it, it's just oh this entire thing has been amazing it, it's been so much fun um and i am particularly excited about uh what's going to be coming up but let's let's go all the way back to the beginning <laughs> <laughs> 
end of some sound effects there. It's like... Whoa, 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 whoa. That's too much editing for me. Okay. Editor says no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, speaking of, obviously we there's two of us that co-host and host. You weren't able to make it uh, for the episode with Blake, but mm-hmm. that was probably the only exception. And it yeah, but like we both... Uh, contribute to the podcast in different ways um i uh, obviously book guests i do the editing i make sure the recordings are all okay um i basically publish it and do the text you edit the text mm-hmm. yes and so i uh, edit the texts and the uh sort of seo side of things i help book the guests as well um, because we both come from sort of different areas and sectors you're working on getting us some sponsorships maybe yes so we're working for sponsorships so anyone that is looking to sponsor a creative podcast that's listening to this you know just uh hit us up on instagram it's probably the best place to get us mm. or, or just send a message leave a comment uh, all of the above telegram and that'll do telegram <laughs> carrier pigeon <laughs> oh. um so um it's it's definitely been a learning curve for me because this is something I've never done before. I've done um, some recording things for music, but I've never tried to run something as, quote unquote, a business, um, but oh. still treating it as a creative learning curve. Um, and that's been really quite fun so, for me so far. Oh, good. Um, the things that I learn in my nine to five and the previous jobs that I've had... Um, particularly when it comes to sort of sales pitches and that sort of thing. I've been incorporating those when it comes to uh, reaching out for sponsorships and uh, just proposing being on the podcast to people as well. Yeah. Um, and I think that that has, uh, that's helped. So it's it's not just all about the, the writing and the music for me. It's also, actually, there are a lot of skills from my day job and from my previous experiences that I can bring into this. I feel like you're interviewing for me. <laughs> I'm interviewing for you. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. You, it's it's amazing. It's things that you definitely fill in the blanks for the. I'm the oh, blank guy. <laughs> no, you just you complete a lot of the podcast. I think part of the reason it's so polished is because you're able to bring all of that in. Um, Thank you. Which is really mm. helpful and really nice. Thank you. <laughs> uh, let's talk some guests. Uh, we've had mm-hmm. some wonderful guests. Many of them are friends because we have very talented, wonderful friends uh, who are, are so agreeable and wonderful for being on the podcast, and it's been just really lovely. Um, but it's also the fact that's, that after the first few episodes went out, we've had people asking to be on the podcast as well. <laughs> yes, that's. I guess yeah, we do have people that have wanted to be on the podcast after. I haven't. I just hadn't even remembered that people had been like oh wow yeah it's really great yeah I, could i be on there and promote my next thing not that uh like so far we don't have as many listeners as i'd like but even then i just we have such a wonderful amount of listeners because it's more than zero <laughs> it, but it's also the fact that when, when we look at the stats and it's like where everyone's from yeah um that and we we publish in two places uh one on anchor and that gets distributed all the way uh, to we we of course are on Apple Podcasts, Google Pod- wherever you're listening to on it. We're there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, obviously, <laughs> but um, I want this to be accessible because, of course, the main entire reason we're doing this is for people to feel a little bit better about the fact that they might struggle with doing a creative career, which should, by all accounts, be fun all the time because it's mm-hmm. pursuing what you love. But of course, it's not every day. It's like any other job in some ways, except the bar for enjoyment is a little bit higher. Um, and so when you have a low day, it takes you by surprise sometimes because uh, you're like, I'm supposed to enjoy this. And some, from what I've seen in online communities, I think not enough people talk about that. And so this is also on YouTube and it's accessible for free. I don't know if YouTube has placed any ads over it, but I, the channel isn't really. We've not asked for it, so. No, yeah. it's it's on my uh, YouTube channel at Nancy Art Music, and it, you know, I don't have enough subscribers to monetize anything yet, and but I think even if we do, I don't, 
I personally get very annoyed with long videos on YouTube where there's four or five ads. How am I supposed to enjoy anything or get into, into the flow of the conversation if I'm looking at an advert? I understand that they're important and that's the way people monetize their <laughs> thing. So I'm, I'm not saying that you shouldn't. It's just not my preference and so I won't do it on mine. It's not your cup of tea. No. But that's the joy of it is that it is everyone can do what they want to do in the way they want to do it. And that is what we're trying to encourage. And it's, as you were saying um, earlier, it's, like, it's reaffirming to know that there are so many people that feel the same way mm-hmm. or that there are so many people that uh, can impart knowledge and get you to try something in a different way that you've never quite done before. And uh, although it's only been a handful of weeks in the long, you know, in the long term of this, it's, uh, it's brought together an awful lot of people, mm-hmm. I feel, from very diverse backgrounds, very diverse aspirations mm-hmm. that are all kind of heading for the same common goal, which is self-fulfillment and supporting themselves. Yeah. And I, everyone should be able to do that however they want to. Um, it's it's not always possible because life is life and life isn't fair, but um, it's uh, it's been really great to talk to people who are able to make efforts towards that and that's been really great one thing i do have to say both for guests future guests that may be listening to this episode or uh listeners who are curious about how we um book guests on most of them have been um some friends of ours obviously uh reddit is such a wonderful place to meet surprisingly sensible people (laughs) um which is obviously i'm one of those uh surprisingly sensible people i guess to some you just never know when you meet people on the internet for the first time yeah i mean we haven't delved into the depths of craigslist or anything yet but no. it's uh <laughs> but no, there's uh, fantastic communities on on uh, reddit so subreddits that are specifically for podcasting mm-hmm. and for individual niche um artistic outlets as yeah. well that we've been checking out we've had some people from tiktok uh and instagram that we've reached out to that have come back with uh great responses izzy from episode five was uh someone that i watched on tiktok and that was amazing and it's just really um it's just great i just we we i got worried when we started doing the podcast that we wouldn't have enough people that were interested in being guests mm mm-hmm. I had also planned for us to talk about a lot of topics individually, which I would still very much like to do. But it turns um, out you've actually booked so many people mm. that we don't quite have time to do that yet. Which is crazy. It's, it's, that's it's, it's definitely... A good, it's a good position to be in. Yeah, it's not nothing that... I didn't expect that to happen. Um, and so I thought that there would be a time where we were scrambling for guests and we would have to fill in that week with an episode. But so far, I think, if all the guests that we've scheduled so far have no problems and there's no further rescheduling, but we also don't book anybody else on, we're done until August. We don't have to book anybody (laughs) else on, which I looked, I had to make a spreadsheet, obviously. And that was incredible to me too, because I was like, because you would you would always planned that episode ten was going to be a metasode, which was looking back on, because you've been saying that for several weeks now. Yeah, and, well, because of course, like I've been really wanting to discuss individual topics, like mm-hmm. what procrastination is like for both you and I, yep. what um, my like a deeper dive into my perfectionism, a uh, deeper dive into your sort of anxiety about sharing your work. Yep. Um, but we haven't actually been able to in some ways, which has been really really nice actually not because i'm avoiding it but just because <laughs> we're procrastinating the episodes yeah oh, that would be funny <laughs> that would be meta in the meta side <laughs> but um just because uh i didn't expect so many people to like actually be this enthusiastic i think mm-hmm. is this imposter syndrome <laughs> um i think this is more taken aback at how how well this has gone so far for something that started as a thought that you've wanted to do for a while and we were chatting about it when walking around a park. Mm. I think initially we just wanted, like, we both think we're really funny and interesting. (laughs) So we wanted to do a podcast, which, of course, there's nothing wrong with that. But I find that for people, um, like, we were talking about finding guests on Reddit, uh, the duality of kind of wanting a podcast that is very much about nothing. Um, it's, It's about, like, nothing in particular, I should say, actually. It's about the interests and individual Mm -hmm. sort of mind of the host, 
Yeah. But also trying to get listeners for that is very difficult. And I found a lot of people on Reddit are kind mm-hmm. of towing the line between like, oh, I, I want to po- make a podcast about nothing in particular, but also... Oh, every every guest we have on is just chatting about something different in their life. Is, uh, well, it's more that like that they, they're happy to have that, but then they don't have a consistent audience because yeah. their audience doesn't know what to expect from each episode. There's no consistency in like what to expect. Mm. I think a lot there's a, a lot of comfort in predictability. And in fact, I hope that whoever's listening to this wasn't really looking forward to a guest episode and then just got the two of us. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, if so, hello, and I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, normal service will resume next week. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, completely agree with everything you were saying about the consistency. This is a podcast that has a, uh, a, a real meaning at its core is in that we want to do our best to be helping people mm-hmm. um, that are in situations that you and I can empathize with because we've been in them ourselves and we know that we're not alone because first mm-hmm. of all we found each other and started talking about that within ourselves we've yeah. got a few friends that we then talked about with it and realized well actually there's a a lot of people out there and um with the future guests that we've been reaching out to um I had uh, I've had a couple of long conversations with upcoming guests about the topics of this podcast and they've both been really enthusiastic about uh, the messages that we're trying to get across mm-hmm. and the impact it can have. And um, just this week, uh, you've received an email from another one uh, saying pretty much the same thing. Yeah, I think it's the the enthusiasm. I, th- I was really worried about the fact that there are so many creative podcasts out there. They can help you with marketing. They can help you with social media outreach. They can help you with finding a style or finding a niche and how to monetize your work and all this stuff. There's a lot of sort of instructional stuff out there. And there is actually a lot of stuff that addresses uh, procrastination and all these other sort of internal demons that people fight to try and get their work out. But uh, there, I, I'm a feeler and I'm a wallower. If I feel sad, I am going to make time for feeling sad. And mm-hmm. then when I'm finished feeling sad, I continue. And I think there's so much, like, medicating, not the, which is a strong word, but um, it's what um, Chris Traeger in Parks and Recreation does for Anne when they're dating. Instead okay. of just yeah. listening and being like, oh, man, that sucks. It, it, like, I, I understand you're going through something rough. It's like, here, let me help you. This is how you can uh, fight your procrastination. Mm-hmm. Five steps for it. And it absolutely has its place. I've consumed that kind of content relentlessly to try and help myself. But there's not a lot that, even though you see the comment sections of those kinds of videos and podcasts yeah. uh, and articles filled with people who are like, oh man, thank you for this. This has been helpful. Or like, you know, I'm procrastinating right now. Like it's <laughs> like it's a contest. Yeah. Well, no, no, it's just like, haha, I'm guilty. But it's also just like, there's it's difficult to find comfort in the the just seeing the numbers of the people that consume that kind of content yes rather than definitely. being like oh let me hear what it is that you're thinking about when you're procrastinating what it is mm-hmm. that you're feeling when you think that something you made isn't good enough you know that kind of thing isn't out there and i'm just i'm so glad that i'm able to make it whether it's entirely selfish or whether other people yep. are able to find it and be happy and happier or at the very least feel like they're not um going crazy basically no and there's um there's a lot of self realization i think that has come through this and from listening to other people um and from being able to just chat with them and mirror certain experiences i've had with oh asking was it a bit like this and then i'm just going mm, not quite like that. it was more like this mm-hmm. and and realizing that there there's so many variables there's so many variations on a theme there's so many ways to experience and understand something and grow from it mm. um that's been really refreshing and I, I i know for a fact that you know when i was growing up i would Uh, read something and it would really resonate with me or it would stick with me and land with me Um, no idea why Mm -hmm. but it it had that and listening to some of the stories that we've had with people or the hints and tips that they've given as to how they've broken through that barrier that was consuming them for a while that's resonated with me that's Mm -hmm. stuck with me and if there is a listener out there that has happened to have that experience 
that's all I want from this. Yeah. The ability to let someone know, hey, you're not the only one that feels this way. You're not the only one struggling with X, Y, Z. And this is how it is. Like, it will get better. You can defeat your demons in the creative realms. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it, not, it takes work and it, it is it's eventually... Not, yeah, it's not a quick fix. It's not necessarily easy. but It can happen for everybody. Yeah. And and that's that's the main thing I want people to get from this, which is also why I want to have such a range of guests on, mm-hmm. um, because there are so many amazing creatives out there that uh, I I just want to hear from. Um, just for example, so there is a letterbox, a postbox outside our house, mm-hmm. um, and there is someone in our local area who uh, knits and uh, crochets these amazing seasonal um scenes i guess you know like sort of yeah. diorama kind of things and um puts them on top of all the post boxes in the area yeah they're like crocheted little animals yeah like i think the one that we have around our house looks kind of like a merry-go-round or something it's uh yeah it's a load of um sort of springtime animals doing the maypole dance so and, cute um and it's things like that of like uh, it's that's creativity for the sake of joy mm-hmm. and um the person that puts that up, uh, I don't think they get paid for it. I don't think they get anything from it. Apart, I think from... they're anonymous because it, it's mm. sort of constructive vandalism. Constru- constructive <laughs> vandalism, yeah. The um, yeah, the 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 cozy Banksy. Mm-hmm. But, um, <laughs> but it, it's things like that of the intricacy of the skill working on. Because I, I park my car next to it constantly and uh, and walk past it most days going to the going to work and the level of skill involved in it, uh, I. I can see that in what everyone does that's on this podcast. Mm-hmm. And also the kind of, uh, I, you know, obviously the person who did it left, the, left it there and doesn't see what we see, which is people taking pictures of it every day and like children yeah. pointing at it and like, you know, it brings people legitimate joy. And I think a lot of artists uh, don't realize that that's what they do for people when they put their work out mm. there, um, when they, you know, do what they do. Wow, fully drifted off. Don't know what to say anymore. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to listen to it. Definitely don't remember at all what I was going to say if I keep this in. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Essentially, we just want artists to be happy. We want writers to write good stuff and for you to share your work and make people happy and also be happy whilst doing it, but not too much because toxic happiness is a thing. (laughs) (laughs) So, so we, we want everyone to have an 8 out of 10 for happiness. And um, no, no, of course not. We Everything should be balanced. I, in fact, actually, that's what we're like. I think almost everything has taught us. In the uh, episode we did with Isabel's art or Izzy, we learned that you have to be able to balance what you need to do feed yourself mm-hmm. and have a roof over your head uh versus like trying to do art and having a job and all that sort of thing uh as well as managing your own mental health and then the finding we talked with uh jacob known as uh that jakey guy or that guy jakey that you need to balance quote unquote being inspired by the things that you consume but that you also make so if you're a gamer but you also make art for games or something like that just balancing all that is so important and really trying to understand what why why you're doing everything that you're doing and seeing if there's a purpose behind it and there's there's so much and everyone is so different that it's so Mm -hmm. difficult for me to even say like this is what you should do and that's one of actually that's one of the things that um i said on this podcast we're not here really to give you advice we're here to be like here's something that you might relate to and this is how each of the guests that we've had addressed it Mm -hmm. or didn't address it and um it's up to you to decide whether that's something that you might want to try and on that point um trying something new and trying something different when uh you're stuck in a rut or the uh the things you normally do aren't quite giving you the results that you're wanting um, it's something I took on board and I've actually been doing for the last few weeks. So uh, I've uh, started doing a thing where I'm writing a poem every single day for 20 days and the results of that are then being published. I've then gone a step further and all of the ways that I'm writing the poetry, I'm doing it in uh, with methods I have never used before in ways that I've never done before. 
so I can't give myself the excuse of sitting on it and mm-hmm. I can and it's scary and it's hard and there are a couple of days where sort of the the deadline is uh, you know every 24 hours um I'm sort of getting towards the evening and I'm there thinking oh god I haven't got anything yet I haven't done anything yet and mm. it's um it's then just taking that step back and thinking about why I'm doing this why I want to be doing it again and realizing that not every single day is a great day. Not every single day is the most productive day. But every single day is a day that I can get better at it. Mm. And I can try something different. And hopefully, um, at least from the last few weeks of chatting with people, that that's one of the main things I've taken out of it. Yeah. And I think well, that's also another thing to, I think, be quite like grateful for. In some way, obviously, we all want to, quote unquote, make it whatever that version of success is for each of us. For some people, it's, you know, 10,000 followers. For some people, it's, you know, 100 patrons, like whatever. My wing in a gallery. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And uh, just understanding that for, like, the position where we're at now, where we have less than whatever our goals are, is in some ways quite a lot fortunate because this is the time to experiment and understand that we're not under anybody else's thumb in in some like not in a sinister way anyway but we have total creative freedom over what we are going to make we were discussing with tony kronoski that uh which is a, a future episode at some point about how there's practically nothing new on earth um, specifically, we were actually, uh, and I gave this podcast as an example because the amount of names mm-hmm. that I went through to Google <laughs> to make sure that I wasn't going to accidentally steal somebody's podcast or website or service, uh, all of the names that we wanted for this podcast already existed in some ways. And here's another thing that frustrated me. I'm going to go on a mini rant. Um, uh. It, it's just, it hurts because most of those podcasts only had a few episodes and then they stopped. I have no intention to do that with this one. Um, the, the solution could have been if there was a really good name that I really wanted to get that I would go and ask. But something completely new from scratch that, you know, nobody else has thought. I have to say, it's really annoying to say the flawed workshop and for people to mishear flawed because it sounds like flued and floored and one of those isn't even a word. (laughs) But um, everybody's experience on Earth so far is um, completely impacts their art, but sometimes you don't know who else you have that in common with. Um, there's a word for this, which is sonder. It's the realization that everybody on the street moving past you in life, whether you know them or not, has a life just as intense and complicated as your own. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's what makes the human condition what it is. And I just get really happy when I think about that sort of thing. I love individuality and I love community, which is contradictory, but this is exactly what I'm talking about. But again, it comes back to that balance. Mm-hmm. Both are needed, both are essential, both and too much are bad. Mm-hmm. And it's finding your own balance and finding what works for you. So uh, for me, I, I quite like working by myself. Um, but recently I've been trying with working in groups and working with different people uh, just because it's something different. It's outside my comfort zone. And like I was saying about the uh, the novel, where the, uh, it, it's something I don't enjoy, but I'm still learning from it. Mm-hmm. We've learned a lot. We've learned we, we've learned a huge amount. I've learned a huge amount. You've learned a huge amount. I think listeners have learned a huge amount. I mean, I've had messages from people saying that was a really interesting mm. piece, or uh, I've now actually gone to so and so's online shop and checked out their stuff because of it. It's been really nice to get that kind of feedback. I think. Uh, just again on that point of balance i can't i can't even i don't think i even understood how important it was before uh but just seeing it being aware of it and then seeing it quote unquote in action Mm -hmm. with every everything that i'm doing recently has been incredible um we mentioned earlier that um 
it's kind of re-sparked some creative flames. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Definitely. talking to other musicians for me that confirmed that I'm not uh, crazy or a diva <laughs> when it comes to music. It's just that I had all these sort of personal blocks in my head against that stopped me from doing it that I'm now addressing. Now that I am addressing those things, I am so excited to do more but have also encountered uh, an issue of balance in that I want to do it so badly that I'm sacrificing my sleep uh, in order to try and get things done and, and forcing myself to have time where I enjoy myself. That, and it, it's such a weird thing. Because um, mm -hmm. yeah. like I said earlier, this podcast comes out every Thursday. The comic comes out every Saturday. In my head, I wanted to... Um, start doing a music project which has always 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 been the goal but now i feel like there's some momentum behind it and i still don't have time to do it except this time it feels like i'm not lying to myself which is really nice that is good um i'd still want to do it oh let's talk about oh oh but speaking of all the exciting things that we've learned uh, let's look towards the future. Um, <laughs> we've got some exciting guests coming up, some of which the episodes are recorded. They just need to be edited and put up. Some which are... Uh, we've got several scheduled uh, for the upcoming weeks and things. Uh, I'm so... I'm, I don't want to jinx it. I'm very excited because three of some of my favourite musicians and artists are coming on Uh who I've been massive fans of for years. So I have Zach from Man Overboard, um, the pop punk band, and uh, talk, we're going to talk about his side projects. Uh, we've also got Keith from Empire Empire, I Was a Lonely Estate, and his newest band, Parting, and the previous band, Anna Flyaway. And then there's also the artist and musician, Nicole Schoenholz, who uh, you may know from 100 Year Ocean, um, a also a small side project, Pillow Skin, and her watercolor work. It's gonna be amazing. I'm very excited. I ooh. It's it's the fact that I've been fan of fans of all three of theirs for so many years, and I've been lucky enough to uh, actually meet um, two of them in person. Mm. Um, fingers crossed for the third uh, at some point when travel's allowed again. Yeah. But um, I, I I just can't wait to pick their brains about how they got through uh, different barriers and how they came up with the idea of what works for one project and not for another mm. and balancing that life because, they, of course, they all have other things going on uh, mm -hmm. as well at the same time. And I, I'm really excited to uh, be speaking with them. Yeah, it'll be interesting to have... It'll be interesting to have some guests where they're a little bit more established so that we can find out more about what kind of... Um, kind of things they encountered as they kind of uh, grew their their creative uh, outlets and, and grew their audiences. And um, yeah, it, it's going to be very, very exciting. But yeah, I, oh, this, this has been such an amazing project and will continue to be such an amazing <laughs> project uh, for as long as uh, my everything will let me. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I have enjoyed doing this so much and um yeah however i think I, at some point we will have to do some plan breaks uh we're gonna have to figure out where the end of the quote-unquote season is okay um yeah. so that will also be interesting for us because we haven't decided any of this and uh, are only just realizing that podcasting to to the stand to make sure that it's a good podcast we want to make uh, give it the due diligence and mm -hmm. give it what it deserves and that it involves a lot of dedication um, both in terms of time and energy, uh, to do. It involves time management. And because we're trying to do so many other things as well with yep. holding down jobs and trying to live our best life um, as a couple, and <laughs> then we're... That doesn't really take that much time. We live together... It and... takes up time, but it doesn't take effort. Uh, uh, I don't... What do you mean it takes time? Oh, because I like chatting with you and stuff. Oh, we, I see yeah, what you mean. So, you know, if if I start playing guitar in the middle of a conversation that we're having, it's not going to go too well. Uh, yeah, I have I have yeah. big trouble like understanding exactly. what's going on when there's two sounds at the same exactly. time. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, so you know, it's making sure that we've then got the the thing where we're, we're still balancing 
Again, it always comes back to balancing for me. So many balancing. Um, so much balancing. Um, well, that's but, metasode. metasode. The flawed workshop balancing. <laughs> um, but it's finding... Oh, no, it's not finding the time. It's making sure we give it the time mm-hmm. that it deserves and that we want it to have. And uh, I think you summed it up quite nicely. Oh, yeah. thank you. Awesome. Mm. Sweet. Well, this is. I, I hope this discussion has been interesting for you guys. Uh, it has been very nice for us to reflect on all the things that we've learned and all the things that we're curious about, so that we've um, got some place recorded that we know we can look back on and check them off later. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes in another sort of fifteen episodes or something. We'll do another one of these and be like episode twenty-five, the next metasode, and then uh, we'll look back onto that and just think. Well, actually, it turns out none of everything we've just been saying is uh, what we've learnt. It's uh, we, we we've now done a complete one eighty. Mm. Uh, mm? I don't think so. <laughs> I think some of the things that we've said have been established in books by people who are smarter than us. Definitely in the before times. <laughs> in the before times. Yeah. <laughs> We've got links to all our work in the show notes if you want to check out Nancy Art Music on all platforms or nancy.art.music on Instagram for the Umeboshi comic every Saturday. Uh, this podcast, of course, is available where you are listening to it now uh, or YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts and anywhere else the podcasts exist. And the best one for me, if you go onto Instagram and go Alex Roberts Writer. You can find all of my most up-to-date things on there. I'm usually quite active, so DM me if you want to have a chat or want to come onto the episodes uh, in the future. And um, I will be giving updates on what's happening with my latest project. If you guys have any questions about a creative struggle of your own, or if you want to recommend yourself, a friend, or tell us who you might like to see on the podcast, please let us know. If you want to leave us a voice note, you can with the link in the show notes. It will take you to anchor.fm where you can leave us a voice note and tell us, uh, you know, say hi. Let us know. Let us know what you're up to. Uh, Yeah. As always, thanks for listening and stay creative. Woo!